streaming services are in trouble. The recent decline of Netflix has proved that an overall lackluster performance across the entire sector. One of the things that made streaming services such as Netflix and Spotify great initially was it helped people cut the cord of major cable companies and switch to something else that was more cost effective and affordable. Now the problem being is some of those big cable companies have diversified out and saturated the market of online streaming services to the point where if you want to get all the content that you need, you're going to have to subscribe to a bunch of them and have a costly monthly TV bill, almost back to the same point where it was with just regular cable. On this channel, one of the things that we do is try to find free and open source alternatives to some of the streaming services and other things that we can host ourselves. Some of the things we talk about is like Jellyfin or Plex, some self-hosted movie, TV show, whatever streaming. Uh, you can do music technically on Jellyfin, but what we're going to be focusing on this video is Navidrome. What this is, is your personal streaming service for music that you can set up and host your own library of music that you already own. What we're going to be doing today is setting up this service on the node so you can access it just about anywhere. You can follow all the steps in this video if you want to self-host it on your own servers as well. And we're going to be adding some music and it's pretty easy. We're just going to be using a, a simple Docker Compose file. Before we get too far into the weeds, this is their website right here. You could learn a lot more about what it actually does and what you could do with it. And one of my favorite things up here is if we go under demo, we could actually get a sneak peek of what it will look like with an actual loaded up library. This is it right here. We can see it's a rather clean and modern interface that looks shockingly similar to a Spotify here. And if we go to open up some music, I'm gonna lower my volume real quick. We can see titles, quality, rating. You can create playlists. You can download files locally from the, your server or wherever you install this. And of course we could get more information and actually play the music if we want to. Everything is sleek, modern, elegant. So with that, let's actually go ahead and get this installed. And like I said, we're going to be doing this on the node. I'm going to be doing this on a Ubuntu server. So past this the node creation, you could go ahead and follow the steps as you see fits. Let's go with a 20.4 LTS. Pick a server that's close to me. The closest one is California. Shared CPU, one gig at five bucks a month is going to be good. I will note that if you do want to try the node, there's going to be a link down below so you get a $100 60 day credit. It's real easy to create the nodes and if I kind of peek over here in Marketplace real quick, you could see some of the easy scripts that you can use to go ahead and get a variety of services spun up, whether that be a Joplin note-taking server, MangoDB, Node.js. They got Pi-hole. I have a video up on the Nodes channel going over how to create our very own VPN, which is pretty cool, using that one-click installer there. But moving on, gonna reselect those. We're just gonna go with the cheapest uh, shared CPU one gig plan here. This is not going to be Ubuntu US West. This is going to be Navidrome server. Give yourself a strong root password and we are good to go. Let's go ahead and create our Linode here after I fix that. <laughs> create Linode and then it should throw us into the dashboard here. There we go. It's provisioning. This might take a couple minutes or so to get spun up. And while it does spin up, what we could do is go over here to the Docker Hub page. I do recommend you using the Docker Compose image here. Because uh, a lot of people have reported errors copying and pasting directly from their documents, so I do hope they fix that soon. And a cool thing is, something we might dive into in a minute, is there's various clients and applications that you could load up on your cell phone to easily access your media library, so it becomes a more uh, acceptable alternative to something like Spotify. Okay, it says it's running. If you ever want to check up on these the nodes, you can just launch the Lish console here. And this will kind of bring up a live terminal of what it's doing, including boot sequences and things like that. It's pretty cool. All right, so there we go. Now, before I go ahead and log in through our terminal, I'm just going to do a quick login just through this Lish console and create myself a, a limited pseudo user because it's not really good to do things like this as the root user. So all I'd want to do logged in as root is go into add user, type in my name, give myself a pretty decent password here. And then here, go ahead and skip all that unless this is actually a server with multiple users. Information is correct. And then sudo, or not sudo, my bad, add user, my username, and then I want to do that into the sudo group. Perfect, and while I'm in here real quick, I could just do an app update and, oh, not money, and I could do a apt upgrade and auto select Y, there we go. Just a couple little prerequisites for basically any Ubuntu server install. And it is just about finishing up here. So we could close out of our Lish console. 
And what I'm going to do is jump over here to Tabby. It's a cool little terminal. It's an electron-based terminal, so a lot of people aren't going to like that. But we're just going to SSH into our Linode, so that is going to be my username I just created at the IP address. So you just give that a copy there, and then paste that on in. Enter. Yes, I do trust it. This is my server, and then we could type in the password, and then we are in. So we already did an update and all that. So all we need to do now is a sudo apt install, and we're going to go ahead and grab Docker compose. And with that, it should go ahead and grab all the various prerequisites and everything that it's going to need, which you can see it is going to do right here. So let's hit enter to continue with that installation. And then while it does that, I'm going to go ahead and jump over here back to Docker hub and give this Docker compose file a quick copy. Now I used to just do Docker stuff straight through the command line and I kind of avoided using Docker Compose, but I really wish I would have never done that because Docker Compose makes things really easy. And that is finishing up. So now real quick, I just want to show you LS. There's currently nothing in our home directory, but what we're going to want to do is uh, let's type in nano. That's the text editor. If you prefer something else, go ahead and use it. Whoa, Docker dash compose. And this is going to be a YAML YML file. Hit enter new file. So now all we need to do is paste this on in and there we go. There's not much we need to change. So we are going to have to change some things on the volume to actually point to the proper directories for our data and music for ports. We can leave that the same unless you want to change that. And we have some other settings, but real quick, I'm going to go control O output that control X. And I want to go ahead and have the music and data in my home directory. So I could do PWD for print working directory. It's just home branding. You go ahead and grab that or do this wherever you want to do this, print the directory and get to the uh, proper folder scheme here. And then let's go ahead and jump back into that Docker compose. And then down here under volumes, we have dot data. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of dot data and then paste on in that directory. So hit paste and then you can see home Brandon. I'm going to do another forward slash and data. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing here with music. It's actually not a long directory. So I'm just going to type it home slash Brandon slash music. And that should be good to go. So let's go ahead and control O to output that control X. And now to actually run this, we're going to do a sudo. So super user do, and it's going to be Docker dash compose. And then we're going to do up, meaning it's going to fire this up and dash D for detached, meaning that when we reboot and all that, it can run without the actual terminal instance running, which is very important Hit enter. And then it should go ahead and start pulling all the images and everything that it needs. We could see it is doing that. And there we go. It is done. And I think the command to view Docker containers, Docker LS dash a probably need to add a container. So let's do that. Docker container LSA and of course pseudo <laughs> there we go okay so we can see the uh, navidrome running right there about a minute ago it's been up for about a minute and it's on the uh, 4553 TCP port so what I'm going to do real quick is go back over to the node I'm going to copy this IP address and actually right here I could just go ahead and paste that on in and then go to 4533 and we'll see if it connects. It does. So we don't need to open up any ports. Oh, and I will know if you do have connection issues, you may need to open up this specific port, but I'll go ahead and leave uh, the command down below to do that. So here, thanks for installing Navidrome to start. Let's create an admin user. So I'm just going to call my admin user, Brandon, and then give myself a pretty decent password. We can see that this is currently not HTTPS. There's probably a way to get that. And I, again, will leave information down below if that's something you are interested in. So here we're logged into our very own fresh instance. We have no albums yet, so we're not really going to be able to do too much. But what I'm going to do real quick is go ahead and pull in some of my music that I have on my NAS over there that I own that I've ripped from a CD into a, uh, a backup there. So I'll be right back. All right, honestly, it's been a little bit. I have probably an hour or two. I kind of been uh, playing around with this, getting music in there. You could say I got some of Tom Petty Wildflowers there. Uh, if I go over to all albums, I'm slowly learning that it's going to require a little bit of work to get this to uh, look as good as I want it to. You can see it's missing some of the album art. A lot of it is to do with naming schemes. I need to make sure that it's all matched up perfectly. I have a lot of uh, featured individuals who are in this list of all albums, so I need to kind of clean that up a bit. And as far as I can tell, there's no way to actually edit this in here 
but there are some fixes. Like I know some of this, uh, some of these Tom Petty albums need Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers to pull properly. Just some things I got to go through and uh, touch up a bit. If I go over here to artists, you can see all the artists. I really only have four on here. It's just pulling all the features and everything. So we have uh, Tim McGraw, Tom Petty, and the Heartbreakers. And then if we go back a little, we have Kanye West and Metallica. Ooh. <laughs> and then if you go into an artist, so let's say uh, Tim McGraw here, you can see we have all of his albums, all of his stuff loaded up completely fine. So that just saves me a little bit of time and it all sounds and plays good. I'll play like half a second of this. Ooh, doo, doo, doo. Don't want to get a copyright strike. And for the record here, I went ahead and moved all these files over with FileZilla. This is one of my more uh, favorite clients here. So if I go into music, you can see the albums I have here. Like I said, I just need to kind of go through and uh, clean up some of the uh, directory names and all that to get all the cover art and everything to load properly. One thing I will note, especially with the Docker image, if you do have issues with uh, file permissions, such as uh, when it makes directories for various albums and all that, uh, for well, one thing I had to do, I loaded up a lot of these files with the root user and then went ahead and changed the permissions from there. So now it all works completely fine. And to change permissions, you could just kind of like select all these, go to file permissions, and then you can see here, I switched everything over to 755, which is perfect. And the more important thing is the application. Now I found a decent one. It's called Substream here. I'm gonna start a screen record. So here we are in the application and you can see I have everything you need. So if I go over here, I could go to albums, and see all the various albums I have available to me. So if I wanted to go to Graduation by Kanye West, I could have all that. And then I could check this over to make it available uh, offline, which is super handy. Probably one of the better features of uh, current media streaming services like Spotify, YouTube Music, whatever it may be. And if I go over here, I could check out my start. I had two start that I was playing around with. You could go in here and make various playlists. And then there's more options for bookmark, podcasts, etc. So that is a real good way to get started in your self-hosted media streaming journey. Uh, in the later video, I'm going to touch on how this works and some of the options we have integrating it in with a pre-existing Jellyfin instance. That's going to be part of that whole series of videos that I do. And with all that, again, there will be a link down below so you can check out Linode, the sponsor of today's video, if you would like to. And with all of that, I hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.